back to the Elementals project where I, a simple culture junkie and dispossessed Duchess of Gondolin, am painting every element in the periodic table as a fantasy creature and bringing you along for the ride. When they're finished, they are going to be a deck of cards that can be used as a scientific memory aid or as an oracle deck similar to tarot. To that end, I've assigned each of them a meaning based on their chemical behavior and I'm composing a companion book which I post page by page as I write it for my supporters on Patreon. There are five of them, and they are the best and most beautiful people in the world. Think you've got what it takes to join them? <laughs> Links in the description. Meanwhile, it's time to talk about zinc. Zinc is a metal that oxidizes easily, which sounds like a negative until you realize that zinc actually protects other metals by attracting all the oxygen in the area and hoarding it. Until the zinc has dissolved completely away, the nearby iron and steel and such are safe. It's the most self-sacrificing element there is. Wherever you see the word galvanized, it means the item has been coated with zinc for this reason, and you'll find zinc rods and pucks attached to bridge girders, ships, rudders, water heaters, and on and on. This is why I assigned him the meaning talisman, because it's, it brings good fortune. Oh, this jump in time makes me weep. I need to recreate for you the problem solving I utilized in the unfilmed bit because I was so pleased with it. Follow me here. I knew I wanted the stool to be something symbolic made of brass, because brass is the most venerable alloy of zinc with copper. But as I was image searching, I found something called a crow's foot, a zinc item which was used in early batteries and looks so freaking cool. So I tried to paint a crow's foot many, many times, and it always looked terrible overbalanced and poor perspective and just wrong and I was getting progressively more frustrated and feeling dissatisfied because after all <laughs> it's not brass so my original vision was being neglected and then suddenly it hit me it's called a crow's foot boom and sure, I could have made it a realistic brass corvid foot, but that might have looked like a giant claw sticking out of his butt, and we just could not be having with that, could we? <laughs> no, I like the way it all came together. Speaking of coming together, you know what I miss? Woman song. It was this monthly gathering of women in a pool at the spa in Manitou. It was women only, trans inclusive, and we sang. That's all. Two hours of women singing in water. Sometimes there were only four or five of us. Sometimes it would get up past 20 and we'd have trouble all fitting in the pool. And what we sang depended entirely on who came. Sometimes it was simple rounds and things we've all known since childhood. Sometimes it would be pagan goddess chants. Sometimes nothing but show tunes and Muppet songs. Sometimes a mix of all the things. The pool room had lovely acoustics, and it was just nice, you know? Just something sweet to look forward to. And some day, when we all feel safe again, woman's song shall return. Oh yes. The same core women have been running this thing in a variety of venues since the stars were born. My mom started taking me to woman's song when I was 12. This one time, in the mid-90s, we gathered in a park with a potluck picnic for afterwards. It was either Beltane or Summer Solstice, because I recall we were all dressed up for ritual. But in the middle of the singing, it started raining, and we rushed the food under shelter, and then we realized that the sun was shining through the rain, and... This is so cool. Because the sun was so high, there was a huge rainbow in the park with us, about 30 feet away. We could all see it, right there, its end planted in the grass. When we walked towards it, it moved away at the same pace. But when us young ones who didn't mind getting wet, me, Andrea, and Em, hello, my loves, when we took turns running out into the area where it was, we could watch each other dancing in a rainbow. It was one of those perfect moments you keep in your heart forever. May we all have plenty of those. The image that I'm aiming for with Zink is the sort of wise, ageless character sitting at the crossroads in old folk tales. The one who gives the main characters good advice, and you can tell the heroes from the villains by how they treat him and whether they follow his counsel. This is fitting enough because Zink is wholesome for us humans. It's a vital trace nutrient, 
It has been shown to help a body fight colds and infections and depression. It's in dandruff shampoo, sunscreen, toothpaste, and diaper rash cream. But I didn't want to include a shopping cart full of stuff in his painting. I just wanted to convey a sort of universal benevolence. I lucked into the light hitting his face just right. Of all the paintings, this one had the most appealing personality to me. Aside from maybe Lanthanum. And the way the light is bouncing around under that hat is a big part of that. I'm not what I'd consider a master of light in the painting department. One must have subtlety and nuance for that, and I'm a much more highly saturated scribbles kind of person. My crayons frequently broke when I was a child because I'd grip them too hard when I got focused. And I really, really loved rainbows. My earliest memories art-wise are of filling pieces of construction paper with rainbows that were round and diagonal and zigzag and arched as long as they were in rainbow order and filled the paper edge to edge. I did this a lot. There are none preserved that I know of because we moved so much when I was small, but I remember. And I cannot recall a time when out-of-order rainbows didn't make me twitch. It was like I was born knowing the proper order of colors. And there are six in a crayon rainbow, my friends. Purple is the word you're after. The whole indigo-violet lie was just Isaac Newton being all obsessy about the number seven because of Pythagoras and music and stuff. This upsets me because it tries to apply precise thought in an imprecise way. A natural rainbow is a gradient, so one could conceivably pick any color for the seventh if one were so inclined. Why indigo instead of vermilion or chartreuse or turquoise? I might actually be okay with it if it were turquoise. I love turquoise. I have nothing against indigo, you understand. It's lovely, but it got singled out arbitrarily, and that pisses me off. Shout out to YouTube's queen of rainbows, Mariah Elizabeth. She does them right. It soothes my soul. I'll link her channel in the description. Looking at that background, I'm dissatisfied with the ripples, particularly the fact that it looks like the crow sculpture is just sort of standing on water, messianically. <laughs> Leave a comment if you have suggestions for how to fix that awkwardness, please. I will futz about with it at some point. Uh, it's, it's not... Nah. Water is such a bitch to paint. It's one of those things that is breathtaking when it's done right, and just kind of meh when done wrong. I have a long history of trying, so sometimes I succeed. I could certainly take some lessons. This is where I'd be pitching Skillshare if they chose to sponsor my videos. <laughs> Maybe someday. In the meantime, we are blessedly ad-free, and I like that I'm not selling you anything. Know this now. If I ever get effusive about playing Raid Shadow Legends, I will absolutely be lying. I never play games. And when I do, they're non-violent. Sometimes I wish I was into games like that one, though, because the character designs are bloody brilliant, and I'd be doing amateur cosplay of several of them, given the slightest excuse. But I refuse to do that when I don't even play the game. I'd be a poser. Ew. It's not exactly painting water, but I got really into mermaids a couple of years ago. In particular, I started doing fan art watercolors of Marvel characters as mermaids. Mervel, I called the project, and I got 16 done in seven weeks and did a show at this awesome local coffee shop called Kapow Comics and Coffee. I'll link their website too. They're amazing people, and I haven't even seen them since lockdown started, so I worry. But the Merville maids, they were lovely. The funny part was, I painted about half of them topless because mermaids should be allowed to go on naturel, right? But the shop needed there to not be nipples on the walls, which makes sense in a kid-friendly venue in a conservative town. So I photoshopped bra-wearing versions of them and we got prints made and hung those instead of the originals. It was my intention last year to revisit that project in May and add some more maids because it's not like Marvel is short of characters, right? But some other project had grabbed me by the face and was monopolizing my energy. Guess which one? <laughs> I decided I wanted Zink's alchemical symbol on his shirt, so I went and looked it up and was pleasantly surprised to find that there were, in fact, four of them. So his shirt is covered with embroidered symbolism, which is white on pale gray, so it's hopefully subtle, 
but a nice added texture. We are making a desultory effort now to make the crow look like he's on a bank of some sort, which is better than it was, but meh. Not my favorite part of this piece. Nor are the coins. They kind of look like beans. I should probably do something about that. A signature and a symbol, and we're one more down. This project, videos and writing included, is the best project ever, and I am so lucky that it's mine and you're coming to see it. Thank you, thank you, I love you. Please come over to Patreon, fling a dollar a month my way, and read my metaphysical write-ups, and I'll see you in the next one. Wear your sunscreen, chase rainbows, and stay healthy. Hey, Abby. I need you. I need my phone. Mommy, what is it? What effort could you need me for? <laughs> Maybe it's making a recipe from the Overwatch cookbook. No, I'm afraid it's nothing quite that cool. It's that I can't quite figure out how Zinc is holding this little heap of coins and I need a model. A hand model. Let us pretend that, in fact, let's just grab you a heap of coins. Or a heap of something. A heap of dollar bills. Let's do this. This is good. Come on. No. Afterwards, can I keep all the change that's that been in my hand? Maybe. You to stand back here, and the angle of the hands is right uh, there. Okay, don't move. That's it good? Let's try a little lower as well. Here, scoot back a bit, because I want his arms to be straight like that, which means... All right, let me take back one of those quarters. Uh, okay. The rest are yours. Thank you. I'm gonna have to sort these things out. Yes, you are. <laughs>